Another day, another coffee, and oh, that's a very nice haircut you've got there. But how would you like to learn how to make this stylist hair in Blender? But hey, if you're new around here, my name's Keelan, and if you're interested in learning something new today, start up Blender, follow along with me, and let's jump on into the video. Oh, and before we do jump in, just a quick note, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for the support lately. You've all been sending me messages saying you really like my work and my tutorials, and that, that is my biggest motivator. So thank you guys, keep on designing. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on how I created this full character, let me know and we'll see what I can do. But with that out of the way, let's carry on with the tutorial. Okay, so enough of my rambling, <laughs> let's just get on with the tutorial. And if you haven't already, grab yourself a nice hot beverage, because, you know, Blender's always better with a coffee. <laughs> so, the first thing I want you guys to do is download my starting Blender files. Uh, you can find the link in the description. I'm just giving you a nice link to this project file right here, where you can start modeling on my cute little character here. So, once you're in and set up, what we're going to do is we're going to jump on over into solid view where we're going to initially get rid of the backdrop. So click on the backdrop, press H to hide and same with the hair here, press H to hide. And on the hair, just make sure you come up here as well and click this little icon here, which is going to disable the hair in the render view also, just to make sure that when you render it, the hair is not going to, you know, start appearing and messing up your design. And okay, so let's also hide the camera because it's in my way and let's get on with the tutorial. So the general idea today is to add in some basic shapes and using the subdivision service modifier, we're going to build out some nicely shaped hair modules, let's say. So let's start by doing shift A and we're going to add a cube. I'm going to GZ to bring this up, scale this down and I'm going to scale this and position it till it's around about the scale that we want to outline the hair. So maybe scale this in the Z axis here, then GZ to bring this down. And I'm gonna bring it around about just above the brows. And we've got a nice box head here, <laughs> but let's go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier. And then just jump into front view. And I'm gonna increase my viewport to three. I'm gonna give it a render of three and scale this up slightly. And if you was looking for a tutorial on how to make an afro, you're welcome. <laughs> but what we're going to do is, just like we've done in some of my other tutorials, if you've seen any of them, we're going to tab into edit mode, and then using the loop cut tool, so press Control R, we're going to Control R, click, and then you get this loop cut here, which when you position anywhere within this shape, it's going to add a bit more shape. So I'm going to click around here, and then I would use this vertex for the top swoop of the hair. Then control R again to add one here, which is going to be a bit of an indent. And then control R again. And this is just going to give us a nice curve down the side. So what we're going to do now is adjust our vertexes to build out the shape of the hair. So let's press Alt Z to make sure that we're in X-ray mode. And that when I highlight this vertex here, it's also highlighting the one at the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one here first then just use GZ to bring this down. Same here, GZ to bring this down and over here, uh, bring these down. And you can see inside of our basic shape, the subdivision surface modifier is doing its thing, giving us a nice rounded shape and giving us uh, some lovely rounded hair. So just keep adjusting your vertexes here until you get a nice shape that you are happy with. I'm just gonna bring this in here, bring this up a bit. And you don't need to spend too much time here because it's just a basic stylist here in the end and just go with what feels right. Okay, so there we are. And now we've got the nice shape right here, but the keen eye amongst you, the keen eyed, might notice that if we go into right view, whoa, <laughs> what is this thing on his head? Well, of course, what we're going to do now is adjust it from the side. So initially, let's do SY to shrink it in a bit, perhaps about here. That looks good to me. And now we're going to make use of the proportional editing tool to make this a little bit less blocky. So let's tab into edit mode. 
and I'm going to go ahead and actually add a loop cut up the center too. So let's do control R here, click once and then right click to keep that perfectly centered and then turn on your proportional editing tool or you can press O, that's the shortcut, but with the proportional editing key on. Let's go ahead and select the vertex and press G to bring this in. So G Y to lock this and what you'll notice is you've got this little circle of effect here and what this is this is the proportional editing tool and what it does it affects the other vertexes within the circle radius based upon what you're doing to the main vertex here so if i bring this in slightly you can see any any vertex within the circle is also being affected just a little bit and that's what we want we just want everything near this vertex to be slightly brought in as well to give us a nice rounded shape. So we can do the same all around. I'm just gonna grab all these four corners, two, three, and four here, and just bring them in slightly so it's not so blocky, uh, but that's looking pretty good to me. And now let's just move on to doing the sides, and then finally the back, uh, we should be done. So let's jump into right side view. I'm going to go ahead and do shift, right click here, do shift A, and let's just use the exact same technique once again. Scale this down, add a subdivision surface modifier, give it a viewport of three, keep the render matching, scale this out in the Y axis initially, or just to your preference, and then jump into front view. I'm going to tab into edit mode, control R, let's stick a loop cut right about here and Alt Z to go into X-ray mode, and I'm just gonna bring this over, bring this out, just to give us a nice stylized shape. You might notice the proportional editing tool is still on, so if you wanna turn that off, go ahead. And I'm just gonna bring these in slightly to get something a bit more natural looking. And that's looking pretty cool to me. Now let's go back into the side. So I wanna thin this out this way, so back into edit mode, alt Z, select in all the bottom vertexes here, and I'm just gonna scale these inwards, and then maybe do the same up here slightly. And would you look at that? That's a nice looking sideburn. That's what they're called, right? Sideburns. <laughs> and let's just mirror this across. So I'm gonna go into our modifiers and add a mirror modifier. Then click the selection icon, select the head, that's gonna mirror it nicely across the head. And look at that. From the front, he's looking great. From the back, somebody shaved a little bit too high. Uh-oh. So let's jump into the back view now. Same again. Shift, right click. Add a cube. Scale it down. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Viewport of three. Render of three. And let's adjust, because right now he's got a big ball on the back of his head. And I would not be happy with that haircut. So S and Y to shrink this in. Tab to edit mode, control R initially. Let's add another loop cut about here. Then Alt Z. And I'm just gonna bring this over to around here maybe. Bring this in and adjust our shape till we get something we're happy with. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, and how's this looking? That's not too bad. A little bit wide at the bottom, but we'll adjust that shortly. I'm just going to go ahead and select both of these ones on the inside here and just do S and Y and then S and X. Width on these just a little bit. And maybe bring it inside the head a little bit more to cover up those gaps. Okay, and then in back view, let's go ahead and into x mode, select all of the bottom vertexes, use S to scale, and I'm just going to line these up a little bit with the nape of the neck. I think it's called the nape, right? And then maybe bring these down a little bit until we get something we're happy with. And you know what? I think for the purposes of this tutorial, that's looking pretty good to me. So when you're happy, just go ahead and right-click shade smooth all of these. And we've got a nice, smooth, stylized hair. Looking good, my friend. Love it. So let's go ahead now and jump in it to materials preview where we can add a bit of color, a bit of pizzazz, and then render this out. So up here, let's jump into material preview. 
and I've already got some nice colors set up. That's looking really nice. I think the white actually looks kind of cool, but that's not what we're going with today. So I'm going to click on the here into our materials properties. I've got a bunch of colors already set up here, but feel free to use your own. So I'm just going to use here, which is a nice fair brownie blonde color. I'm going to apply it to all parts of the hair. And would you look at that? I think we're good to render, you know. So jump on over into our rendered view. I'm going to go into my collection up here and re-enable my BG, which is my background, re-enable my camera. And let's go ahead and jump into the camera view here by selecting this little camera icon. And I've got a scene here, which is 1080 by 1080 pixels, which is perfect for your Instagram and well, I suppose more social medias, a nice square image, right? And now depending on your preference, you can render an EV or cycles, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into cycles, hit F12 and skip on into the render. And there we have some beautiful stylized hair. But that's going to just about do it for today's tutorial. Once again, thank you so much for the support lately. And if you did make it to the end, go ahead and tweet me or tag me in your Instagram post because I'd love to see how yours turned out. But my name has been Keelan. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.